Hi everyone, Mike here from Bikes by Mike with another cycling related video. So I'm back upstairs to talk to you about my ultra premium custom wheel build featuring the light bicycles, AR545, carbon rims and DT Swiss 180 hubs. This is my third and last video in a series covering my custom wheel build. I've now put a thousand kilometers of riding on this wheel set. So I'm in a good position to give you my review of how well these wheels perform under a variety of riding conditions. And while this isn't a long-term review of a wheel set, I still will comment on their durability and wear resistance. As with every other product review I've done, I'm not getting paid for this review. I bought all the wheel components with my own money and will gladly tell you if there are parts of this wheel I don't like. So I won't go into detail on the specs on these wheels as I covered that bit off in my previous episodes. If you haven't checked out those two videos, click on the links in the description below. In short, here's the scoop. I built up this wheel set with some premium components. For rims, I chose the Falcon Pro AR565 disc, which is Light Bicycle's newest and most advanced road rims. It features their X-Flow profile, which they claim produces a rim with reduced aero drag, is more laterally stiff, and has 30% greater impact resistance. For hubs, I went with DT Swiss's top tier, newly redesigned 180 hubs. For spokes, I went with DT Swiss's straight pull, bladed spokes all around, but use their aero comp for the front disc side and rear drive side with the slightly lighter aero light spokes for the front non-disc side and rear non-drive side. I originally built these wheels for my 2020 Cannondale System 6, but I've just recently bought a 2022 Cannondale Super 6 EBO high mod disc road bike. I'll do a review of the Super 6 in a future episode. But being able to test my wheels on two quite different styles of road bikes reveal quite a lot about these hoops. So I'll be able to give you my opinion on whether these wheels are more suited for a strong aero focused bike like the System 6 or the aero influenced but more all rounder like the Super 6 EVO. And I'll do something kind of different in that I'll rate the wheels for use on each of the two bikes. Because wheels are optimized not only for certain riding conditions like flats or hills, but also for certain styles of bikes. Before I get into how these wheels perform, let me first comment on their durability. Now, I wouldn't expect anything to go wrong after just 1,000 kilometers of use, and that has proven to be the case here. The wheels have held their shape very well and are still super true. I also checked the spoke tension on both front and rear wheels, and there has been no drop in spoke tension. I'll be curious to see how they hold up over time, but I'll say a lot more about the quality of my own wheel building than the quality of the rims and other components. So I'm going to rate these wheels based on their performance in three specific areas. Compliance, power transfer, and stability. From these three criteria, I'll give the wheels an overall rating for each of the two bikes. Okay, let's start with compliance, specifically lateral and vertical compliance. Let's forget about torsional compliance as most riders don't notice it. It doesn't vary much between wheels. And unless you're talking about the ideal spoke lacing pattern, it's not that important. Let's start off with lateral compliance as that's what most people feel the most when riding. And wheel builders generally want to optimize wheels to be very laterally stiff. Most everyone has ridden wheels that are not laterally stiff and the ride feel is just awful. The wheels feel floppy and sluggish and quite frankly, in some cases just aren't all that safe to ride. These light bicycle custom wheels are super laterally stiff. Visually hammering up a steep climb, applying all the force I can to the pedals, I see no lateral movement in the wheel at all. This makes for wheels that feel extremely lively and responsive. Sluggish and floppy are terms that cannot be used to describe these wheels. In terms of vertical compliance, they're also super stiff. I suspect the combination of the deep rim profile and the use of bladed spokes are partly at play here. On smooth pavement, it's not an issue, but with the wheels mounted on the Cannondale System 6, they're bordering on being too stiff for less than pristine asphalt as they transfer a bit too much road vibration through the frame and to me, the rider. Now, I should mention that by dropping the tire air pressure by about five or 10 PSI or so, I could reduce some of the feedback but not all that I wanted. But this is where I noticed the biggest difference in ride feel between the wheels mounted on the System 6 versus the Super 6. 
On my Super 6, the wheels had enough compliance to remove the irritating vibration over small road imperfections, yet still felt super stiff and responsive. In my opinion, it hit the sweet spot for a wheel that feels super light and responsive, yet still reasonably comfortable, or as comfortable as the top tier race wheel can be. Since the bike geometry between the two bikes is very similar, I attribute the difference in ride feel to the slightly rounder and less aero frame tubes and the more compliant seat post found on the Super 6. Regardless of the reasons, the wheels did feel noticeably different on the two bikes. Next is power transfer. Again, the wheels are massively impressive here. They just feel so damn fast on both flats and on hills. The stiffness has something to do with it, but also the fact that these are light wheels weighing in at just 1400 grams. You feel like every bit of power you're applying to the pedals is going into moving the bike forward. They're just responsive and nimble. They feel just as fast as my previous Cannondale Not 64 wheels on the flats and noticeably faster on the climbs. Basically, it's an aero profile wheel with the lightness of a climbing specific wheel. It's a true all rounder. The final criteria I'll rate the wheels on is stability, specifically how they handle in crosswinds. A deeper section wheel is always going to struggle in the crosswinds more than one with a shallow rim profile. My goal when specking out these wheels was to go as deep as possible before making them unsafe in the crosswinds and before the weight penalty of aero rims becomes too great. I do think these 55 millimeter light bicycle rims hit the sweet spot. I was able to test them out on a couple very windy days, and better yet, days with strong gusts. And in these conditions, I did have to pay more attention to keeping the bike stable. But it was never so bad that I felt I could be thrown offline into the middle of the road or off onto the shoulder. They are marginally better in the crosswinds than my Not 64s, and good enough that I'll be confident riding them in the high mountains. I'd say they are as good or better than most wheels having similar rim depth. But if you're one that feels skittish in crosswinds, these probably are not the rims for you. Now for my scoring of the custom wheels for each of the two bikes. On compliance, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for the System 6 and a 10 out of 10 for the Super 6. For power transfer, a 10 out of 10 for both. And for stability, both get a score of 8.5. I give these wheels an overall score of 8.5 out of 10 for use on the System 6 and a 9.5 for use on the Super 6. Excellent scores for both, with these wheels being a bit better suited for the Super 6. So that's pretty much it for my on-bike testing of the custom light bicycle wheel set. The most impressive wheels I've ever ridden and ones that will be very difficult to beat at any price point. Of course, you expect a wheel set over $3,000 Canadian to offer very little in the way of compromises. That's all I've got for today, folks. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe as it allow me to produce more content for all of you. See you next time. Happy rolling.